Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Marcus from CCD Discussions coming at you with my Fusion Roll video that I talked about. This is going to be my favorite set two deck, um, plus options against top two that I think are very good. Um, Zabasu. This is this is the deck that I will be playing for the format for whatever time I'll be playing the game left. Um, and I really wanted to talk about it with you guys and its matchup against top two. Um, because I've got like a 60-70% win rate, I think, uh, with Zamasu. Um, and this deck just has so many tools and the ability to just outlast them. And uh, I've got some gameplay to show you guys. Um, my opponents aren't like the greatest, but you'll kind of see that there's really nothing that they could have done. I'll show you a loss, a, a couple wins, so you kind of get the idea of um, how things should have gone differently. The one loss I'm going to show you, I should have won the game. I'm just a dingus and decided to not for no reason um and we'll talk about that when we get there and then um we'll get into some deck lists um just to so you guys can kind of see so uh which decks i think are good so obviously um beerus is a really strong one against top uh the crit on the front side is really good cooler's not too bad but once if they play 17 once you, they play 17 your 20k bodies just lose a lot of steam against the deck uh, but if they don't see 17 or don't play 17, uh, Cooler is very favored, much like Beerus is into it. You'll just kind of topple and roll them over. Um, Cell's not too bad. It's about 50-50 if you get good hands, um, at least, if not favored, because there's a point in the game where, like, they just won't be able to come back from you healing a card and losing two and swinging at multiple bodies with 45 um, and we'll go over those lists, but the surprising one is this, um, and I'll show you a gameplay of this one as well at the end. Um, but I just kind of want to show you uh, my lists uh, for these real quick. We'll start with Cell, then we'll go to Zoro, and then we'll get into Zamasu, and the bulk of the video will be about this. And then we'll show you a gameplay of this at the end and how this deck, this deck really out advantages uh, top coup and just runs them over eventually, so... Um, let's uh, look at Cell, right? Uh, so Cell's a relatively new leader to the game. Uh, by that, I mean you just came out in this set. So um, on the front side, it's attack, draw a card. And then um, on the back, uh, after awakens and draws at uh, four or less, uh, swing draws a card. But it has to activate main, which is absolutely massive. Uh, if you have five energy, you have to have exactly five. Add up to one card with a cost of three or more from your drop to your energy. Uh, and this comes in as active, which is very, very strong against Top Coup. It's actually one of the reasons why this leader of all the leaders is probably the leader of green to play, if not Brawly. Every other leader just is kind of terrible. Um, uh, Gohan included. I don't think very, Gohan's very good into Top Coup. But um, uh, let's look at the list over here. Uh, we've got our... Oh, man, I always do this. I gotta, I gotta right-click it, not left-click it. Um... Uh, well, we got our Sun Goku draw a card, our Kami at four. Um, this KO is a card. This is massive against Roshi, which is the main reason why you want this card. Um, and him being a 10k combo is really strong. Our Moa, I wasn't running this card at first, but it's probably a lot better than the um, uh, uh, the Sun Gohan because it looks five deep for a card. And we want our extra cards, and you'll see them here in a bit. And him being a 5K is also just really nice against the early swings. Um, this is a 10K combo that can challenge uh, Top Coup's top end, which is like fours and threes. Uh, this card is nuts. Um, I really underestimate how strong this card is. It's a 10K2 that comes in for free if you have Cell 8 on the board. And then when it's played apt, one extra from your draw of your hand. I mean, that that is just busted. I, it's so strong. Uh, Vegeta, we play four of it. You have to play four of this card if you're playing green. Uh, it not only can swing 20k out of body, but uh, it can pop Roshi while swinging at like a hit, for example. That's like really good value. And same thing for this 30k, same thing pops a four or less. Um, I might play, uh, I would play three droids and one of this SCR, but this SCR and the droids, they serve the same purpose. It's a multi card board wipe. Um, against people, and then the, the, the double strike comes in uh, a lot. You can win a lot of games and finish them off. Um, Cell's actually better than, like, regular androids, and I feel like Brawly as well. This, this heal is just insane. You, you can't get enough value. Uh, Vegeta Super Combo, our top end is only uh, this Cell. Um, 
and then uh, we've got uh, two Imsa Kamehameha's, uh, should be four Gigantic Meteor, uh, yeah, because I have this one. Uh, two Big Bang, uh, Destructive Strength, we go with this over any of the other. Uh, it's a searchable card off of this, which is card digs five deep for it, which is insane. And then uh, the Field Spell is another card that this card searches. So we have a fair amount of cards, uh, two, eight, uh, 12, 16 cards that can be searched off this MOA. Um, and, uh, you just get a whole lot of RAM. This field spell has got to be one of the most broken in-type engine cards I've seen for the game yet. Um, this card is basically a draw a card or RAM. Activate main search card or the rest of your leader. Shell, go top card of your deck. Either add it to your energy or add it to your hand. Uh, which can just be absolutely backbreaking. Uh, this cell right here is insane. This 8 draw. Let's talk about him for a second. On play. Uh, place your cards from your energy and drop. Choose up two of your opponent's cards and KO them. Then add the top card of your deck to your life. So you get to heal, KO two cards, and swing at one for 45. Uh, massive value there. And then your leader effect here um, to add up a cost of three or more. Um, if these cards are in your drop, like you can like charge into your energy. Destructor Strength is going to be in your drop. You can then add those cards active. And the fact that this energy comes in active means that Gigantic Meteor is live and you can literally tell hidden glimpse of hidden strength to go jump in a lake. Um, it's actually one of the reasons probably to play this leader in this meta. Um, but uh, that is enough of Cell. Um, it's really strong. Beerus, I'm not even going to talk about it. There's multiple lists out there. Uh, this one, though, th this deck is a deck that people are sleeping on. I can guarantee you that. And I'll show you what I mean. This deck just out advantages top coup while basically doing the same thing and having unique advantages. So this 17 and Gohan, both of them um, get the buff, which is massive because this becomes 30k, this becomes 30k while swinging at something and minusing. This becomes 25. And then uh, this new card that we got here, this Frieza one drop is just broken um, in the deck. Uh, the fact that you get to be plus five on its effect during your turn and then plus five again from the leader effect, um, both for its effect, um, is ridiculous. It's a one drop 20k if you're awakened, which we'll use it when we're awakened. And if you have like five energy and they're a 20k leader between TN and this, just one drop 20, one drop 25, one drop 20, one drop 25, it's broken. Um, but, uh, overall the list is very T.O.P. heavy. We've got our Whis, our Roshis. I only have three of this card for red, which is unfortunate. I gotta get another one, but, um, it's enough. We have enough self-awakening in the deck. Um, Basil, Frieza, Tien, you saw those. Three hits, we don't need four. Uh, Khalif was insane, though. A crit card that self-awakens, and it's cheaper than 17, so we play it over 17. Um, and then we've got our, our Krillins for self-awakening. Frost is still really strong. It's really good against yellow still. So, like, if they play cooler, cooler is very problematic. Uh, you want this. It's also really good against Topku because I'll show you. This can't swing. This can't swing. This can't swing. This can't swing unless uh, they're awakened. Um, and this can't swing. So, if they play these cards early, they can't swing with them. And uh, that's just absolutely massive. Um, and uh, so Frost still has a little bit of value, uh, both of the red. Uh, the thing that's broken, of all the uh, SRs that I got, I got four of this right away, which is just crazy. It's like the game's trying to tell me to play red or something, even though I really want, except for maybe this deck. Um, I'm not even really wanting to touch Beerus because of how oppressive this stupid engine is. But like, I wanted to show you guys that I try other options of red just to see how they stacked up. Um, and this, this deck stacks up extremely well, but these two Khaliflas, uh, Keflas, sorry, not Khaliflas, but Keflas, this is where the deck shines. The fact that you get to draw multiple cards from both of these, even though they can do the same thing, they have to pitch a card to play the Kefla, which means they lost a card in hand, and against Zoroku, um, which is what I'm calling this from One Piece, uh, Zoro does the same thing, buffs the entire board. Uh, yeah, this is problematic. This is very, very problematic uh, for them eventually. And you'll see what I mean by advantage. I even have the one Gohan here. Um, and you'll see how broken uh, that is. And then we got four double strikes. Uh, yeah, it's broken. 
best double strike in the game. And then uh, our only event we play is the two um, uh, Glimpse of Inerrogance, right? Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, this deck is a deck that is just as aggressive and will beat them into the ground. Whereas we don't get to play multiple Keflas, we got these one drops that kind of supplement that are cheaper, more in just as many attack attackers, and then we uh, don't have to pitch cards from our hand to play our cards. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, going back, we're, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today. Uh, we'll talk about Zamasu. So this is definitely, in my opinion, the best position deck against Topku. I know there's some people floating around with Trunks List. Uh, a couple of my friends have talked about Vegeta um, and some of the other crit leaders like Oku Black and Cooler, but... Uh, Zamasu is far and above every single deck that I played against Topku. I've won far more games with it, um, and it doesn't even matter whether it's low end or high end. Um, and we'll uh, talk about the list real quick. So, um, starting off with the leader, um, the uh, front side's 15k draw a card. We know if it's a three or less draw a card, flip a card over. That's really um, doing this awaken correctly is super necessary. You want to swing, draw, and then awaken, draw, because you don't draw on your backside. But on our backside, we have an activate main for one energy. Once per turn, discard one card from your hand if, my, if your life is a true less. Add the top card of your deck to your life. Uh, this is completely massive because they can spend an entire turn dedicated to basically getting you to two so the next turn they can rebrand you and then, like, like double strike kill you. And then you just flip it on them by playing Zeno and then tapping an energy and then healing a life so that that can't be done. Um, and then you'll also swing with your leader to tax a card or two out of their hand, unless you want to just put pressure on life uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but onto the list, we play the four of the one drops Masu. This card is a one drop 10K, has 5K power, so you got to be careful about when you play it in the early game so it just doesn't die to Whis. Um, but you can choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with uh, a cost of one place on the bottom of the deck. So this hits Roshi, which is the reason why we play four of it. Um, next, uh, we've got Pilaf. He is completely busted. One of the big reasons why um, we out advantage them, right? Uh, they get a whole bunch of cards early, and then you'll just see their hand size decrease to somewhere near yours. And then the recovery cards like this and um our go tanks come in and then the game it just gets out of reach like they can't win the game anymore um and then we've got two go 10 i have two of the one that can actually attack and then uh this one right here choose one of your opponent's packers or two or less or return to its own chance the card's not th this effect isn't very good uh but if i want to return something to the hand to make them replay it i do have it in here uh this card's an attacker we have it as an ability to just be aggressive at matchups we need to be aggressive with um, other than that, there's no other real reason for the split. I'm um, even actually thinking about increasing both of these, at least in ratio, because there's times where I get to go tanks and I just do not have the two tens that I want to add back. Uh, Trunks, Cantrip, draw a card, very pivotal in the early game if you see it against Top Coup. Uh, this card's also insane. Because we're basically um, defending all the time, and you'll see what I'm talking about, we will over defend on cards that look like we're just expending cards. And they have like 11 and we have four or five or six. And it's like, my God, how do you win this game? And then you'll get to a point where like they'll play all their cards and then you'll just wipe them with Zeno or Sickle Scythe or something else. And then over time, once we start dropping our bombs, uh, we just get all of our cards back and then uh, just cycle through uh, and continuously stay at a high life total and put them in bad positions. Um, uh, but this card, the ability to self-awaken if we need to, which we generally don't want to take life against Topku, uh, followed by being a 25k beat stick is no joke. Uh, it can instantly challenge Kefla's and other cards on their board, which is one of the reasons why we want it. Uh, this Vegito is insane. I would actually consider cutting a Gotenks for another one of these. That'd be the only addition, but I only have two from the packs that I've opened on the Sim. Uh, but this Vegito is nuts. Uh, so you have seven or less cards in your hand, reduce the cost of all of your opponent's battle cards by one. And then on play, you choose up one of your opponent's battle cards for a cost of one and place it on the bottom of its owner's deck. Uh, so these effects stack, these permanents here. So if you have one on the board and play another one, now a three or less can get bottom decked by his effect on play which is really good. In the mirror match, he's insane because not only is he 25k, but he addresses this, 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 this. So he addresses all of these cards right here. Um, furthermore, against Top Coup, this bottom deck's hit, this bottom deck's um, 
uh, Roshi, this bottom deck's Whis, this bottom deck's just a lot of cards. And 25k is actually a little bit awkward for their minus effects, uh, because top two doesn't really surround itself with minusing that much. Um, now, if it's rested and your cards get minus, their cards are going to die because they'll have enough attackers for them. Uh, but this card's uh, really clutch. Uh, Zamasu, we play two of it. Uh, you could play four of it over the Vegeta, but I think you need two Vegeta, and you'll see a game where this card is absolutely, this card's really massive. Um, but bottom line being, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, you get to draw a card, and then as it win KO'd from your, uh, play this card for, in rest mode from your drop, um, and then you can't play Zamasu Fuse for the turn. Here's the thing. Um, this card, much like this Vegito, is very sticky. Oh god, I keep, keep left-clicking when I shouldn't. Um, anyway, the card's very, very sticky. And, um... Against green, uh, they have to KO twice, which is problematic for them. So they, they have to dedicate an attack into it, basically, and a KO effect. Uh, furthermore, against red, um, they can just throw body attacks at it, which means it's not going at your life, which means if it lives, it's going to draw cards to replenish our hand that we use to protect it and simultaneously challenge our cards, only to potentially get, like, Zen or Sickle Scythe anyway. So um, it's a really, really strong card. Uh, Go Tank, Go Tanks is insane. This this is probably the best card in blue right now. Probably next to this one. Uh, X, sorry, this is probably the second best card in blue next to this one, and then probably third is this one or Sickle Scythe. Like the these three cards right here are literally backbreaking to uh, the top two matchup. Uh, you'll see it. This card just eventually is adding back too much power with all of their board getting like wiped and gone and then doing too much and then this card is a finishers this like one of the strongest like finishers that like are in the game like uh this card solo puts the top coup matchup once it's like played in a, a correct position it puts the entire matchup out of reach for them like th there's just nothing they can do um vegeta you have to play at least two of this card. You need the double strike pressure to be able to put them down by one. Like, if you swing with leader and then, like, they they don't have the energy to play Glimpse and they go down to one off an attack because they have, like, seven cards in hand and they think they're fine, you auto will win if you have, like, seven, eight energy. Dropping this card, bottom decking a card they can combo with, and then playing, like, double peel off... Peel off, peel off, peel off, add back another peel off or another 10k. And then like Gallic Gun hand dump for big amounts of damage uh, with this card and just steal games. And I'll show you a game of that. Uh, Zeno, the backbreaker and the most needed card in the game. It's one of like, like the only reason why I don't think you can play yellow is because yellow doesn't have any board wipes. Uh, green has... Um, uh, green has uh, Gohan, which it can ramp to. Uh, blue has this, um, and this is the best leader to stall out in it because at least when you get to your uh, backside, you'll be 25k. Um, but uh, red's got Beerus, which is massive. The only thing that's iffy about Beerus in the mirror match or uh, against red is if they have 17 on the board, it cannot be KO'd by effects which is just super unfortunate. Uh, but Zeno bottom decks the whole board, which uh, includes fields, which is really massive because this actually drastically hurts um, Cell. It really hurts Cell a lot. Um, uh, super combos, uh, four Gallic Gun, four Sickle Scythe, um, and two Absolute Lightning. The videos I'm going to show you today, this was at three and this was at three, but I made the adjustment because this is only really here. Um, it's a new card. Choose a 20 run spell cards, place on bottom of its owner's deck to address green, which isn't very prevalent right now, but you still run into the occasional cell or something else. And having a one card, three energy out is very nice. Uh, but this card's insane. Uh, this is probably like the strongest extra card in the game right now. Um, activate main, choose a tree of your opponent's battle cards with cost of four or less and place it at the bottom of their, of their owner's deck in any order. Like, that is insanity, man. This card is so broken against them, just, uh, against top code, just being able to remove multiple bodies for three energy while being able to swing at something else and potentially pressure, depending on, like, how your turn goes out is crazy. And then Gallic Gun is just, like, one of the best cards for this leader because they swing with a lot of 25s. This will take us a 30 and replace itself. 
I can't express enough how strong this card is too for the matchup. So um, that's pretty much the deck list. Uh, let's uh, head back to the home screen. I'll pull up a few videos for you. Start off with uh, the one where I lost. Uh, we'll speed our way through it. For the record, I want you to look at these turn counts. Um, uh, they go, the, these games go long. Okay, they go very long. Um, but we will re watch the replay here. We can turn this off so there's not as much of a glare. And then, um, yeah. So I make a mistake in this at the end that gets me killed, but honestly, my opponent got extremely lucky to pull this one out. Um, I made a judgment call and I, I failed because of it. Um, we'll speed it up times two. Um, so two things to note. If you get second with Zamasu, this matchup is losing for them. If you just get second alone. Um, we start off here. We get our cantrip. Uh, they swing. They don't have something to KO this. We, we defend ourselves. You'll just see this a lot. You'll see this happening a lot. Our hand size being low doesn't really matter. What matters is that, um, you know, we maintain that high life total so that we can get to our Zenos, our other removal, and then manage their board as the game goes on. And we already have our Sickle Scythe here. Uh, here I do a play where I, uh, for my two energy, I play my Trunks draw card, play my Pilaf, get my Trunks back. And then again, he's going to swing. I'm just going to combo it off. Don't care. I don't care. It's fine. He cantrips as well. Look at his hand size. Hand size is nine to my seven. Six. Okay. We're just going to keep doing the same thing we're doing. Keep the flow going. Swing into him. We also get the trunks here, which is massive. Uh, I'm going to play this guy down as well. I'm going to be able to swing 25 at him. Uh, choose not to bounce anything because I don't want him to get more searches for either Keflor or more draws. Um, uh, he takes the damage. This is an uncommon tech. So this Son of Gohan uh, chooses all of your opponent's battle cards against minus 10k. That's not common in top coup that I've seen. Um, and it just wipes my board here, which is pretty devastating. But like, it's not nothing that we can't recover from. Uh, we will just combo out of this with the 5k. We got rid of the go tanks. And then um, we will uh, take that damage. Um, here, uh, my opponent makes a little bit of a misplay. I swing into this, and I combo up to 25, and he thinks I comboed only to 20, and then stops. Uh, so he either would have costed him a card in his hand, which is what I wanted, uh, but then he got rid of combo and let it die, and I still lose this game after that one mistake, which feels really bad. Uh, he plays Goku, KOs my peel off, it's fine. Uh, look at my life total. He's at four. I'm at seven. Seven cards to 12. Uh, but I'm in no danger here. I still have my three energy up. Uh, two of my energy up. So this 25k swing with that Gala gun I was talking about puts us to 30. That's one of those 25k swings. Uh, he doesn't have the self-awakening to put himself down so he can then use the spam for Kefla. So we get a little bit lucky there. Uh, we challenge uh, the card. Just swing into it to draw. And then we play down Vegeta. So Vegeta is massive here. This is one of the uh, points where I'll pause it. So Vegeta in this situation is really broken. If they're at four life and I get rid of, um, I got rid of his uh, Goku. Now I can swing double strike at him and it's going to cost him this card and some other cards in hand to get over this. Otherwise, when he awakens, he'll be at two. And if I have another Vegeta on the following turn, I threaten lethal, which he can't, he can't allow this attack to go through. So um, it's, it's really good. Any super combos out, which is what we want. Super combo and and the Piccolo gone. We basically board wiped him and passed it back and said, deal with my 35k card. Uh, he plays Krillin, self-awakens, totally fine. Uh, he draws cards, and at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it. So we are now at 12 cards. He's at three life. Uh, I'm at six, but I have eight cards in hand. Three more life would put me to 11, so we'd be basically even, but I've got a 35k double striker, and he's only got a Krillin. And furthermore, I've got multiple super combos, lots of cards that I want. I can combo to protect myself against these two 20k piddly sw swings. I don't give a crap about these. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I also want him to play Kefla here, right? Like, I want him to be investing in Kefla because we're already at five energy. If this Vegeta dies for some reason, that only means that um, he's going to get Zenode. 
And if he doesn't die, right, if Vegeta doesn't die, I still have Sickle Scythe, which is really, really strong here. So, um, he plays Kefla for one, doing her dirty shenanigans, plays down Gohan. The Gohan hurts a lot in the matchup, and then he taps three for Kenna Pesla. Uh, massive turn for him, right? Uh, but again, we're just going to keep to our, stick to our game plan. We're going to uh, combo out of this 20k swing. Doesn't matter. 25k to 15, minus 15 to the Vegeta, brings him down uh, to 10. Um, we took the damage of the 25, he swings his leader swing into Vegeta. Vegeta has now absorbed a, another attack. Uh, he swings with the uh, Krillin, we combo out with Pilaf, because we have another Pilaf to grab it back. And then um, we'll take this and go down to 4. Now we're going to charge the Absolute Lightning here. Um, and now I swing into the crow in here. This is this is uh, this sequencing is super important. Okay, if he defended that, that was incorrect because I'm just going to Zeno his cards off the board anyway, which is why we swung into it. Uh, but notice the advantage now. I'm at four life. He's at three. I'm at nine. He's at ten. However, this board does what's here for him will never matter for the rest of the game. We got multiple Zenos. This me th these cards just might as well be at the bottom of his deck and not on the board anymore. So, um, and then we promptly make that happen. Um, and then here, it's important that we swing because we want to take another card out of his hand or knock him to two to threaten the Vegeta next turn. Because again, if we're at Vegeta and we have Gallic Gun plus all these cards in hand, and uh, it's going to be a lot. So he activates Goku's effect, plays Kefla. Kefla does Kefla things. He plays another Kefla, which draws a card, takes him to eight. It's eight to eight. You then hard cast Kefla. And just like that, his entire board is back. Isn't this tier zero meta fun, guys? Uh, but again, we'll just use our advantage. Again, we want to get our hand size low so that we can do what we can um, against our opponent. Um, and then we'll take this, go down to three. Now, it's important I don't take any more damage from here um, because I want to be able to swing, draw a card, and then awaken, draw a card. So I'm going to basically defend this out. He goes to 35. I basically super combo, get a 5K, and then he's going to swing 20 because he should. And then we have... Uh, another super combo for that and we just go to 35 so no biggie here again this board might as well not exist so this is the first mistake i make the attack target i choose is this kefla it should have been this gohan and the only reason why it's a mistake is because i'm going to do my attack sweep sequence like i said attack awaken uh, attack draw awaken draw and Choosing this card is correct because of this 5k combo right here because I swing at this He just gets to use this card for free. It doesn't cost him anything in his hand And I do lose this game by 5k exactly not that this swing right here matters because I'm not If the only reason it would matter is if he tried to protect this card and doesn't let it die So I swing I awaken beautiful Oh, uh, I go ahead and play down the Zeno, board wipe him, and then I have Gallic Gun here uh, uh, for stuff. He plays a Rebrand, then glimpses, and I'm like, that's cute, because I've got Gallic Gun and a free 10k that I'm going to be able to combo here. And that's the Zeno. Notice I didn't combo the peel off in hand, I comboed the Zeno. That's like really key. And he plays Kefla. With his remaining uh, energy, draws a card, swings, I just go 25. Now again, if he swung here, this is a mistake, right? It cost him another card in hand, which he cannot afford to do. In fact, I'll even like reveal what his hand is. It's Keto Pesla, Beerus, Beerus, and um, a super combo. And then this next turn is very devastating for me, but overall relatively fine. Um, I sickle sight these two cards instead of Zenoing, which is what you should do. Um, I swing at him, uh, he combos out, and then I do, I go peel off, into peel off, into peel off, into trunks, and I think that the game is actually over by this point. There's nothing he can do to win except this card. It's not even a card I forgot about, it's just that it's not what I expected. Um, he pitches his other Beerus, 
Um, and then he combos up. Um, I let him hit me here. Um, even if he rebrand here, he can't glimpse. So it, uh, uh, taking that damage doesn't matter as much. Um, now I make one more mistake here. Um, so here I add, um, I, I, th this is, this play wasn't a mistake. I play Goku Black, get this back. I don't have a Goten, which hurts so bad. Um, otherwise I would win this game on the spot if I'd had a Goten. Um, and then I peel off to get it back. And then I use the peel off here, bang, boom. And then again, I swing and challenge. I play the peel off again to add another peel. Cause remember, I don't have a Gallic gun. So I just might as well keep challenging this card for free. Now, there are two things. The first is that um, on this next turn, um, I should have comboed out of this swing and I did not. That's just the first mistake. The second is that the only combination of cards he could possibly get is a card that got him glimpse or glimpse itself and another 10k it is the only combination of cards the reason is because this beerus is 35k glimpse can be applied to the leader and get another 10k otherwise he loses the game and so he swings here with beerus i should have just comboed out and this super combo right here i should have just comboed out and, and been done with it I thought to myself, there's no shot if my fear was he plays, re swings, draws, this is Rebrian, and I get doubled anyway. So I just take the damage like a nincompoop, and I should not have. I should have just comboed out of that because he would have given me another card to combo with, which was another 10k. So I messed it. This is my mistake. This is the error that I make. Otherwise, he loses this game, right? He even board wiped a whole bunch of attrition, and he lost. Um, but uh, he wins by exactly 5K, 75 to 75, and that's the game. Otherwise, he loses next turn to all of my all my pressure. But the fact that he got Glimpse was the only reason why he won the game. Without Glimpse, so draws Roshi plays Roshi, takes a life with Roshi, the card he takes is Glimpse, he then swings with Leader, gets another 10k, not a 5k, not a zero cost, nothing, and then Glimpses, and because his freaking Beerus is 35k, he gets the other 10k back to be able to out-combo me exactly to game. So that right, th and it was winnable if I just super combo out of the Beerus attack. So yeah, don't, don't make the mistake I did. Just super combo out. He should have lost the game. Okay. Uh, moving on to this next game. Uh, here is another win. I have lots of wins on Zamasu. Like I said, I'm like 60 or 70% winning the game every time. I also realize this is low rank, uh, but the concepts basically are the same. Uh, we're going to fast forward through this one pretty quickly um, and just talk about some key differences that we have in the matchup. Um, and then the last one we'll watch all the way through, and then I'll show you the Zoraku game, and then we'll be done. Um, but let's, uh, so he starts off with Roshi. Perfect. We got the Zamasu. This is what we want this card for in the matchup. Um, also he got second again, which is always favorite for him. We can combo out early. The card we comboed with, um, is fine. Now he does something a little bit interesting here. I'm not really sure if this is a misplay, but he act plays another Roshi sacrificing an energy marker to take another life to get closer to awakening, which I really get. That's what you want to do. So you can play down your Keflas. Um, and then you can play down other cards and then score the board. And then like, if I don't have the cards to like really deal with it early, I just eventually kind of fold to the pressure, right? Like I get that. And the energy marker is actually very massive on the double Kefla play on your turn four. So if you're awakened by the time you get to four energy, you can play a Kefla raw and then use the leader effect to play another one. So I'm not, I think this might be a slight misplay. But it is very problematic for me because I have only one answer possible right now. I would need another Zamasu. Um, so I play this Zamasu, go down to three cards in hand, get rid of this card, swing to draw. 
get absolute lightning it is what it is um and then uh we just keep going through he plays down the only card i didn't want to see which is weiss uh gets rid of my zamasu that hurts he can trips again searches kefla of course totally fine um and then activates uh swings uh gives me a, gives me a life pass this turn we got zeno great we charge the absolute lightning don't need it and then i draw the vegeto which is massive um because i just play the vegeto bottom deck the roshi and then do not give him the ability to um basically uh sub lincoln play another card sacrifice the turn and then play only uh like one of those cards like if he plays gohan here which he does he can swing, um, and this 25k is massive. This is kind of what I was talking about when I say they can't really minus your cards. Like, even with this one lease and this Gohan, this card's still going to live, which is fine. It's a good thing we didn't attack with it either, because if I had attacked him and self awakened him and he played Gohan, he would have been able to swing back at it. Okay, uh, so then I swing into that card. I just want to get a draw, and then I'm going to swing into a Vegito. And then he combos out a card. So it's 10 to 8. I have five life, he has three. I play down Zabasu. I have exactly seven cards, so I'm gonna get another draw here. And then again, it's gonna cost him another 10K in hand. Perfect, it was rebrand. That's what I like to see. So it's now nine to eight, two to two, but I have two more life than him, so we're sitting in a pretty good position here. And you're about to see how annoying this Zabasu in this matchup can truly be. If they do not have a lot of removal, like if this was another this should, if this was another Gohan, this is also something you should. He should have minus this first before playing that so he could KO this, so this is a mistake. Uh, but you're about to see how much attention this absorbs into the matchup because he doesn't want me to keep drawing cards, which is fine. But if this was going at my leader, it basically would have been the same. Like the result would have been the same and this card would have lived. So I understand why he wants to get rid of it. And then now he's going to swing at it again. And then I let it die because his recursion effect comes back. <laughs> And then he swings to do it with lead, and then I, I super combo uh, to protect it because I want Zeno for the following turns. And now is the grind, right? This is where we start grinding. Uh, charge the trunks. I'm going to sickle side two of his cards. Now, this is a mistake on my part. I should have hit the 17 and then hit this Gohan, and I did not. Then I should have just swung only into the Gohan, and I did not. So this was a mistake on my part. But it's okay because we end up winning this game anyway. But the bottom line is, is the reason why I have to I have to get rid of this card is because he can minus the Zamasu and swing at it easier. Or if he plays another Gohan, he'll definitely be able to kill Zamasu and he'll die by mechanic, and I won't be able to um, I won't be able to to uh, recur him. So the sickle size should have been on the seventeen, and this Gohan. And then I should have just swung into his 25k beat sticks. So, um, yeah. Uh, he lets the Goku die. I have no idea why, but I'm fine with it. Um, it's a shame we didn't have another energy because I would have swung into this and then um, punished this super combo save by just bottom decking the card with it. But... It's okay. Now, um, again, this is one of those situations where uh, we're totally fine with it. He's going to swing. He's going to minus again, which is fine because I'm going to let it die just to come back. Right? Uh, he does uh, uh, top coup things. Oh, also, look at the, look at this advantage right now. Like, look at the, what What is this hot nonsense? Five cards to five. I have five life, two to four, but that four might as well not exist because of this card. So, like, it's basically five to five, and, again, the, the game's just slowly going into my favor. Uh, plays down that. I let it die, finally. Sorry, Zamasu. I'm not going to spend the Gallant Gun and that when I may need it to protect my, um, I may need it to protect, uh, my, my life, like, right here. Um... And perfect. And then now my board's clear. I get rid of the sickle side because I have another Zeno. I swing. Not going to get any cards. Doesn't matter that he protects it. I'm not attacking at his life. I'm not comboing anything. Again, I'm just maintaining hand size. And then I'm swinging at his life. Uh, I hit him to two. Okay. 
Uh, this is massive for me because he's dead next turn. He doesn't know he's dead, but I do. I know that he's dead next turn. I can take all this damage in the world. I didn't take this one intentionally because I know he's going to swarm the board and there will be more attacks to take. So I just guarded out of that one. It's fine. It does not matter what life, what, like, what cards he puts on the board here. It does not matter whatsoever. I also see that he's at one energy, which means he cannot glimpse me. So I take all my damage. And then uh, this is how you kill... Um, this is how you kill um, Topku, okay? I comboed here to make sure this card died in case somehow I don't kill him here. I probably didn't even have to do that. I probably could have just let this go, and then he sweep, play, pays 10 and then dies anyway. Uh, but this is a point. Wait, if, if you're Topku, this number right here against this deck on their first awaken turn at seven energy is not possible for you to survive. You'll lose. Like if you're a top Q player, realize that you're losing in this position, no matter what. Number one, these cards mean nothing. We have extra cards that like can just get rid of them. I have two Zenos in my hand that could out this entire board. You protecting this card is bait. And the only reason why I put 10 K on this is because I wanted to get a super combo. I got a little bit greedy. Probably didn't need to do that. But the bottom line is, is that this card dies. Okay. I mean, this is just a complete defeat, bro. Uh, Pilaf. And then Vegeta. So Pilaf grabs Pilaf. Notice I didn't play the other Pilaf because we need the one for the Gallant Gun. And then it's Hand Dump City. And then Gallant Gun draw. Get another 10k. And go up to 100 in 10,000. GG. Could have been 120. But he can't win. Uh, he would need glimpse there at the minimum in a lot of super combos. Um, and I don't know what his hand hand was, um, but it was just a complete and utter defeat. You can see what I'm talking about, right? That you just out advantage them. You just get to a point where it's not really recoverable. He did dedicate a lot of attacks into the Zamasu only for the card to come back. So I can definitely see like a little bit of criticism there. And that's not going up my life. But it doesn't change anything in the end, because if he doesn't kill the Zamasu, I will still swing at his board, I'll awaken, still swing at his board, and then wipe it anyway with all my extra cards and whatever else. So it, it really does not matter if you're gonna if you're gonna critique the player for that. Um we're going to watch this full through. Um all the way. Um, now we got second. As soon as I got second, I thought the game was over. Uh, we got our Zamasu here. Perfect. Um, we can answer this Basil. He gets a search. Searches out um, the uh, Rosie. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Rosie, but the Rosie actually puts some insane pressure into the late game. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I was like, oh my, that card's actually kind of good. Um... Uh, and then we're going to just Zamasu. This is going to go at normal pace, guys. Um, and then we'll fast forward through the Zoroku game because it, well, Zoroku game won't even take that long anyway because it's a very fast game. Um, uh, but we uh, bottom decked the Basil. Uh, homeboy over here decides he's going to self awaken a little bit, plays down the Chrome. We're fine with it. Uh, swings into our life, just calm the Zamasu. Again, I don't need. Uh, Oh, I decided to take it. Oh, yeah, I take it because he has the crow to swing 20. Right, yeah. Uh, what Wouldn't matter. I'd take a damage either way. But I can combo out of this one. If he doesn't swing with the crow in, then it's fine, right? I just got an extra card in my hand. Um, and then here, draw trunks, charger trunks, play down. Um, uh, actually, instead of playing the trunks down to draw a card first, I actually swung into his crow to see if he'd give it to me, which he did. I was like, yes! Because if not, what I was going to have to do was play down this Trunks right here and then swing over the Krillin. And if he protected it, he'd have less cards in hand, which is only good for us. Um, then we play the Cantrip. We draw a card. We pass. We didn't oh, help him self-awaken. Now he has to play another card to self-awaken. This is kind of the name of the game. If you can control the self-awakeners, you're in a really good position. And uh, again, he just swings that life. And then we just use the one Cantrip that we play. Also notice that I have Gallant Gun back for um, another swing if he so chooses to do so. Um, and then here he gets Roshi. I'm like, dang, man, like, 
Uh, now I have to get rid of that. And I consider sickle scything here. Um, uh, but I think I just uh, end up going against that um, and deciding that, you know what, if he wants to awaken, fine, I'll awaken him myself. And I just decide to play the trunks down here um, and I'll swing. Now, here's the thing. Even though that trunks is in 25, you, just, you could combo out or you could not. So you just take this base 15. This trunks is going to do its job. It's going to probably die next turn, which is fine. Um, but now he's at the awaken turn. So here he can play a three drop and he can use the TOP Goku effect to play down a Kefla. His hand size is massive. It's like 12 or 13 stinking cards. Um, what is it? It's 12. Yeah, it's a 12, 12 card hand. Uh, I'm sitting at seven, but I have seven life. So I have seven cards in my hand, but I have four more life than he does. You see this? Um, he then plays down the Gohan, which is the best card in this position. Gets to be able to swing 25k at me, minus the trunks, and get rid of that. So I don't even have to be able to Kate and attack into it. Wow. Like, really, really good. Um, so, uh, but there's that Gallant Gun, guys, what I'm telling you. It, it is so strong. Now, this 25k gets completely negated. I replace the card in my hand. I still remain at high life total. And now he's going to um, activate the effect. He's going to have to pitch another card in hand. He's going to play Kefla. Sure, he's going to draw the card that he replaces. But the reality is, is that um, uh, now the, the game is a lot more in my favor. Um, he swings at me with Kefla. Um, I decide whether or not I want to take it. And I'm like, you know what? I can take this one. doesn't matter. Just give me more cards in my hand. And then he swings with this Kefla here. Uh, just for base 20, I have two Go Tanks in my hand. I was like, absolutely. That Goku Black right there is just going to be feasting on those Go Tanks in my drop. Get rid of them right now. If I can get me a Go Ten or something into my uh, drop area, I will be sitting pretty. Um, here, I charge the Vegeta. I don't really need the Vegeta. Uh, it's better to sickle side, get rid of the Gohan and the Kefla. Just get rid of both of them. And then uh, swing into his card. Uh, not needing to combo anything here. I uh, just want to draw and pass. Now I realize, oh my god, he's got a 20k card on board, and he's got his leader swing, man. Doesn't that feel bad if he Kefla's you again? I mean, yeah, it can, but at the end of the day, uh, no matter what, I'm not dying. I've got two super combos, two 10k cards if I really need it. One of them is one I want to keep. Get Absolute Lightning here. It's not the greatest card, but you know what? It's going to be a free charge. We're fine with that. We're fine with that. And so, we just, again, take this swing. I get the Go 10 finally, and I was like, oh yeah, boy, now we're going to be cooking. He does Kefla things, which is absolutely, you know, to be expected. He's back up to 11 cards. Uh, he's putting lots of bodies on the board. But here's the thing, man. If you play another Kefla here, and I'm going into six energy next turn, they're all gone. And your 25Ks don't matter. Basically, all of these swings are negated. I can go down to three. That doesn't matter. You can play another Kefla. It doesn't matter. I can super combo out of this. It doesn't matter. And by going down to three here, I incentivize him to play another card, which he doesn't, which is fine. We're just going to charge the absolute lightning. And then I'm going to swing, draw, and then again, draw. Now, this time it's different because I'm going to Zeno his board. And there's nothing for him to combo on the board uh, besides the Roshi, which would have protected any card from this 25k swing regardless. But because... So this is something that's really key here. Um, this is mind games, just, just so that you guys kind of understand this. So again, I did what you should do as a Masa. You swing, draw, awake, and draw. I'm going to be 25K to his 25. Now this card's a 10K, but because we're even, the incentivization over attacking one of these cards for him to just use this card, not use this card and not a card in hand decreases because I'm attacking a card of equal strength, Okay. This is just a, a quick, like, you know, pro tip lesson for you guys. So because I swung into this, it was more combo efficient for him to take a 5K, which wasn't on the board in order, because this is a 10K combo card, right? Uh, to over combo, so I got a card out of his hand, and he's going to still go lose to Roshi. So that's super important, guys. And uh, that energy marker I was talking about, got me to Zeno one turn closer, which is why I said that it's it's kind of curtains. Like, this is really bad. And now I'm going to take another card out of his hand because I charged Vegeta earlier. Guess what he thinks is in my hand? Vegeta. 
and going down to going down to uh, going down to to life could be very dangerous. He gets glimpsed. I was like, oh, good. So can't can't let Rebrian hit with multiple energy open, uh, or you know have the Roshi on the board, which we got rid of, right? Uh, so he swings here to go thirty. We'll just ten k over that. No big. Double cantrip, searches cards. That's fine. Do what you gotta do, bro. I'm sitting fine. There's just there's zero chance I'm dead here. Super combo, super combo, ten ten. Like I'm not dying this turn. There's just no way. Uh, can I Pestla? It's got to get a minus five. It's fine. Because if he attacks into that Zeno, it's a card that's not going at me. And again, we'll just freely 10k combo out. Doesn't matter. Nine cards in hand to seven. Both at three life. He's going to then uh, minus uh, uh, that. And then he's going to combo up to 30. Which is what I wanted to do. Because this card's a 20k, this is also very bad for him. Right? If it was a 20k leader, he wouldn't need to spend a card. But he still has to spend a card. And now my Zeno lives. And he has only two cards on the board. And I have Sickle Size. So you know what I said? That's fine. I'll swing 20 into this. Go ahead and protect it. He doesn't protect it. I'm like, okay. Fine with me. Didn't protect it. Let's see if he's going to do the same thing with the Kefla. Okay, so I'm just testing his hand at this point. And again, he lets it go. So now I don't have to invest any energy in a Sickle Scythe. And it gives me free permission to play this card. Which is really good. Um, and remember those go tanks I pitched earlier for that Kefla swing? Well, this is where the game gets out of, completely out of hand for Taku. At this point in the game, the game is actually just over. I had the go ten in my hand, um, combat earlier, so now I've got seven cards to his eight, but I have a 40k, a 20k, a 25k leader, and now a 25k go tanks all going at him. He's now going to go down to one. I don't know if I agree with going to one here. But uh, just looking at his hand, right, like, to reveal it, this is what he was dealing with and why he he decided to not do it, okay? Rebriand, uh, Keto Pesla, uh, Hidden Glimpse of Arrogance, four Super Combos, a Rosie, and another Keto Pesla. So he would have either had to give me the Rebriand, which he doesn't want to, Glimpse, which he couldn't have, a super combo, which you wouldn't have had to do, or two 5Ks out of hand, right? So this card's not a 10K. Oh, it is a 10K. Never mind. He just went out and gave me one of those, which is maybe what he should have done. Uh, but hindsight's 20, 20 I'm not really sure if that's like a misplay or not. But the reality is, is that like now all of this threatens lethal. And it would have been irrelevant if it did in any way. And you'll see what I mean. But like... Even if he had defended that attack there, we're not worried about it at all. Uh, he swings uh, 30 with this. This is this Rosie, by the way. When attacking this card gets 5,000 power for each of your opponent's battle cards, like, oh my gosh, that card's actually not too bad. So against the spammy boards like the one I have, yeah, it's pretty important. And uh, he uses a Ketopusa here to uh, combo up. Again, I simply match it. No problem. Able to do that. And then, um, again, I saw my two super combos. I'm not dying to anything on this board. Uh, he's also out of Kefla's, by the way. So, I mean, this is just where the deck will run out of steam. Even if he had Kefla here, I still don't lose this game. I Like, Kefla here does not win him the game whatsoever, right? It just, it just, then I topped that Goku Black. I was like, well, this game is actually just over. So there's two theories of philosophy here. You could either go at the cards, which I think is not correct. I think I just need to actually put everything into the into his life, um, and then I'll start. I, I just keep testing the hand slowly, um, and then I'm like, you know what? I wonder if he'll give me these cards. So then I was like, you know what? Removing these cards off the board might not be such a bad idea. And so, uh, they're 15s, my Goku Black's a 40, I'm about to play another Goku Black, I'm about to get two more cards, and I'm gonna have an energy up for Galakun. The game is truly out of reach for him anyway. Just clear the board. Make sure that he has to replay everything again, 
And then th this is just beyond backward. I mean, there, there is nothing to do with this because guess what's still on my drop from the two that I comboed earlier, another go tanks. Um, and then I'm gonna swing into this and you guys can see what I'm talking about, right? Th there's just a point where he's running low on steam or completely out of it. And I've got a bunch of regeneration and card advantage that I could just get recycled back to my hand. It would have cost him two super combos to get out of that attack, by the way. And it's going to cost him another one just to not. So, he also has two energy up for Glimpse of Hidden Arrogance. So, no, you can't play a one drop here and try to go for game. Because that card's definitely going to protect him. Um, it does not even matter here if I take this damage. Um, but I can't because, uh, you know, like, if he had comboed, I, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, but he's going to play the Gohan. But he is literally screwed, man. There is no hope in high high heaven or whatever for him to be able to win this game. Uh, he, he'd have to activate uh, Glimpse. And then um, bring back uh, Rebrian. Play her for one, maybe, if that's possible. And then um, combo out, which he couldn't possibly kill me from, even with that. So um, then he just plays Rosie. Um, and by the way, he's put this up to 50 with Glimpse to try to get me to take one. I was like, you want to know what? You have no energy. I can actually just take this, and it's just another card in my hand to kill you on the crackback next turn. And then he promptly surrenders here. There's there's just no winning this. Um for the record, uh, how this turn would have played out, um, the Goku Blacks would have played both of these Trunkses, and one of them would have taken my life. So it's 25k, 25k, uh, 25k from Gotenks, 25k from Gotenks, 40 from Goku Black, 40 from Goku Black, 20 from that, and 25 from Leader. There are more attacks than cards available in his hand, number one and number two. Even if he didn't, most people at one life would fold to that due to just sheer combo numbers that they're just not going to have at, at a point. Uh, but you can see, that was a complete and utter total, like, raffle stomp. That game wasn't close at all. He At no point was Tabku ever in control of that game. Um, and I find that to be the case more often than not. Um, uh, this, I think is the um top coup versus um zoro coup or god uh, blue god coup um i really wanted to oh no that's not it it's cell versus 17. sorry these i wish there was like some way to see like what deck you played versus what deck they played i played a little bit of cell I think this is it. By the way, if this is the if this is the uh, Goku Blue versus um, it is, this is uh, those matches. All those victories that I had leading up to that were me playing this deck against this one. <laughs> oh, this it's so free, man! Uh, this is so free. Uh, this is a beautiful hand for me. I have Self Awakener. Um, I also, I think I get second here. Yeah, I do. Um, I have multiple self-awakeners. Um, he doesn't play anything to start. I get Roshi. Instead of playing down the hit to self-awaken or Khalifa to swing for the crit, which probably would be better, I'm just going to uh, do myself a favor, swing at him, play down the Roshi, take a life, self-awaken, pass the turn back to him, say what you got to either get rid of this or this is going to be a thorn. And to top it off, I got the Whis, which means next turn, instead of playing the hit, unless he plays a card and swings with it that I want to commit to, I can self-awaken. She plays his hit here. So we're going to promptly deal with that. And then I could play the Whis and the Roshi to get rid of like another Roshi if they played it or their Whis and still be able to self-awaken and it would be really good. Um, but homeboy here is about to feel my wrath. Okay. Um, he swings twice into me. This is very dangerous. If you're top coup in this position, I'm just letting you know right now, this is too dangerous. 
okay? You have two energy, I have two energy, plus the energy marker. You're adding cards to my hand, it's now nine to seven. And uh, I'm about to just start freely attacking into your cards here. And I'm gonna awaken and all my cards are gonna get really powerful. If you're top coup here, just realize that you can't kill his, like this, this deck's board, excuse me, very easily, you can't. Whereas he, on the other hand, doesn't care about how what your board looks like. I will turn every card sideways into your cards, just like you would do for me. But the difference is, is I'm going to have more cards. And you're a 15k for a whole extra life. Okay, that matters a lot. And so, um, I'll just demonstrate exactly what I mean. Uh, get Glimpse out of life. Draw Glimpse. Charge Glimpse, because I only need one to finish the game. Uh, swing into his hit. Take a life. So I get another card in my hand. I got that Frieza. This Frieza is insane. This Frieza is insane. It's going to be massive. Then I wake and draw Super Combo. And now I now look at this. I mean, look at the hand disparity. We're talking 7 to 10. I'm awakening. About to go to 11. And you're going to have to take a whole nother turn to either double self-awaken here. And every card I play on the following turn, because look at this. Th this is why the energy marker is just also so massive for this. I'm going to Kefla, and the next turn, I'm going to Kefla, and the turn after that, I'm going to play, like, a whole bunch of other hot nonsense. Um, well, he's dead in two turns anyway. But, like, th the because I remember what happens in this video. Uh, but look at this. He's basically investing his entire turn to self-awaken, which is fine. Uh, but then he plays his hit. And, uh, yeah, he's just, he, this is, this is, this is all over. It's all ogre now, as my friend Brandon would say. It's all over. Uh, he can't win from this position. I've got way too many cards. It doesn't even matter that those cards are what they were. Um, it doesn't matter that, you know, uh, uh I, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just all bad. It, it literally would not matter what we did. That hit is not dying. And a thousand percent, I'm going to counter clap extremely hard into his board. Uh, you get rid of the Roshi here so he can't free combo the card. And then uh, tax the hand. So it's 10 to 10. 10 to 9. Defend it once. Okay, fine. Defend it again. Okay. And now it's Kefla. And this is broken, bro. This card should not exist to be able to... Kefla should not be able to be played off Kefla. The fact that I just drew two cards and my hand size didn't change at all, and now he realizes the combo's a mistake. I was like, okay, now I'll just go with your life. No problem. And now it's 7 to 11, and I have one more left of him. And you see what I mean. There's four, four cards in this matchup is a massive difference. Because the maximum number of cards he can play this turn is three. Three for a three drop. And then using the leader effect to play a four. Okay? So he plays his Kefla. He does his Kefla things. But the difference is, is I have 11 cards to defend it just like you defended yours. And now he's down to five. And then his Goku free KOs. But look at this. Four cards to 11. And he has only two more bodies than me. This is what I mean, man. Because he had to pitch a card here. Yeah, he drew a card. But he didn't get another card like I did. The Kefla and the Kefla thing that I did. Man, it's just, it's too much. They're eventually going to fold to your pressure. Gohan swings. Okay. Swings into my card. And then I realized, oh, actually, Super Combo works here. So I'll just Super Combo. Okay. And then my opponent's probably like, actually, I'm really glad that he's spending Super Combos. Well, you shouldn't be. Because this... And the reason why you actually need to protect these cards... I, pr I protected this card here, and it's important for me to... Is because look at where all the attacks are going into this one card. Fine. Fine. I lost three cards. It's seven to five all right, in hand advantage. It's still two to three. Your advantage, I'm plus one on you. But I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to draw, swing, and draw again. 
So I'm actually technically two up on top of whatever my charge is. And guess what? I got Kefla and the Kefla. So now we're going to swing my Kefla and his Kefla. Okay, spend a card. Fine. Okay. Now spend another card. Fine. And now he starts to get it. He realizes at this point he can't keep divesting his hand into this because I still haven't played a card. So, he, well, I say that and then he goes and does this. To which I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know what I'm going to do for you? Here's Kefla. And then I think I play Gohan here. Yeah. And this guy's a 30. So take another card. And here's the reality. This is a little bit of a mind game. Why not swing with the Gohan first? Why swing with the Kefla? You swing with Kefla first because you make it apparent that no matter what card you combo on, it's dead. If this is the target I keep attacking over and over and over and over again, if I would have pivoted to attack this one, he may not spend a card out of hand, right? Or he may spend a card out of hand to protect it. But you basically, because I play the go on here, I am threatening this card over and over again, which means he's probably just going to attack it again with the Gohan. I might as well let it die. And then and as a result, in his mind, I get to freely kill this card because I'm going to swing 30 over 10. It would cost him a super combo and something else. If he spent a super combo in this position is 7 to 3 and another card just to save this 25k while I have 4 life, okay. Okay, buddy. I'll take that in a heartbeat. I'll take it in a heartbeat. And then bada bing, bada boom. And just like that, he has no board. And look at this hand disparity. I'm four cards above him. I have four bodies on the board. So I'm technically eight cards above him right now. And there is not a hope or a prayer. I'm going to defend all this, my guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't have the cards to be investing this, these swings anyway. You don't. He does not have the cards. And then he just plays his 17, increases his leader up, and then literally has nothing else. When I go to look at his hand, it's rebrand, glimpse, and a super combo. He's not killing me that turn. Even if he had devoted all that, then I drew Kefla. The game is truly over at this point. I got a little bit lucky with this other Kefla, but it, it actually doesn't matter because of the TN and the Frieza. Um, so I could literally play the, the three drop, play the TN, play the Frieza, and he auto dies uh, to the, or the these attacks here. There are more attacks on this board than his life and hand can possibly even have. And I have five cards to his two, four life to his now two, and it's it's over. It's literally over. And also the fact that Zoroku buffs this 17 to being what it is is ridiculous. I decide, I know that he's dead mathematically. He cannot win this game, even with this two energy up for the glimpse that I was calling out is in his hand. I'm just going to swing with all these even low numbers at his life. It doesn't even matter that this thing's on the board. This card might as well not even exist, bro. It's like, it, it hasn't, it's not even doing anything for him. But I say that all that to say that, like, it's going to cost you a card every time. Okay. And then guess what? I just swing here. Boom. And then when I got the super combo, I was like, that's either a glimpse or another super combo. So I'll just swing again. It's 5k. Um, and he doesn't have a 30k on board, so he doesn't get a 10k back. It wouldn't even matter if he was able to, because I'd see what the card in his hand is. And then uh, that Frieza that came out for this deck, this is busted, bro. That's a 25k, and it just literally attacks right at him, and he surrenders. There's nothing to do here. I mean, that would have been... What would that have been? Uh, 35, 45, 50? A glimpse wouldn't have even got him out of that. So, yeah.
that's uh, pretty much it for Zoraku. All those wins that you saw pre previously when I pulled out the video, those are all that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But uh, I just wanted to make this video for you guys. Um, I'm really, really liking Zamasu. It's very, very strong uh, into uh, uh, Topku. Um, I don't think there's a lot of... Uh, things that you can really do to play around it. So here's here's the thing that's problematic. A lot of people, just to, to finish up with Zamasu real quick, um, a lot of people say that like, what you have to do is you have to hold Kefla's back so that you can like reestablish the board and the pressure. Uh, but the issue with um, that whole game plan is Sickle Scythe. Uh, the fact that we have Zeno and Sickle Scythe at the same time, if you play only a couple bodies per turn, I basically get to, when I get to like later energy turns where I have like four, five, six, seven energy, I can play this, get rid of your cards regardless, swing at the cards that are remaining rested if there's any on the board, and then uh, basically have energy up for Gallant Gun um, and uh, energy up for me to play Peel Off in order to get other cards back for the advantage. So the whole idea that like, a good top coup player just uh, decides that they're going to not invest into their Keflas over and over again for pressure reasons. It doesn't work. Just letting you know ahead of time that it doesn't work. Um, not against this variant of this deck because, again, less attacks at me is what I want. So if you're not attacking me, period, or my board, that, like, if I have cards on it like these two or this or this that I value then the only thing you're allowing me to do is remove your cards for a cheaper cost while having more energy for defensive cards like this and peel off or the trunks or something else that got rid of a one drop or something else. So um, there is not a way for top crew to play anything other than to like go full gas aggressive against you. And you saw the war of attrition even in the game that I showed you that I lost, I should have won. If I super combo over Beerus, he cannot possibly win the game. And the only combination of cards that he could have gotten to win that game would have been Glimpse because the Beerus was on the board and what it was. And you saw it was only by 5k. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, that was my mistake, but, like, I, it's a mistake I will never make again. I promise you that. Like, that, that's not, that's not going to come up. Like, I'm just going to, like, recognize that. that I could just combo out of this and then force you to have Rebring in, in your hand plus a glimpse at that point and uh it's you're not gonna be able to do the pitch because you'll lose the one the the glimpse and then yeah it, it was just really unfortunate so super unfortunate but it is what it is um but i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh if you test this list out i hope that it works well for you um yeah the, the, the stack's actually locally insane i thought it was just a stolly deck that was bad but no it's it's got some serious endgame teeth to it while completely controlling your opponent's board state. Like, it's an, it's nuts. And then the reality is, is that, like, right now, like, this card is just way too freaking strong. Like, it's so good, bro. Like, just taking two of your opponent's cards to the bottom of the deck and telling them to take a hike. And then this card is just, once you get to six energy, this card is a threat every single turn. It's just backbreaking. Because, like, literally your opponent can just, like, invest. And then when they only take one or two life off of five battle cards and then they, like, lose all of them, it's got it's deflating. So, um, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, this is Marcus from TCG Discussions signing off. Laters.